Hello there. I'm doing this presentation on the Power of Excel 2010 slicers and creating a dashboard. Someone had asked about the effectiveness of Excel in creating a dashboard and just wanted a screenshot is just for an example. But rather than doing a screenshot, I thought I'd just give you this quick demo video. Right now I'm looking at a sample manufactured database data table it's a hypothetical situation of stores that are selling specific products in the breads, fruits, and vegetable category with specific products. And looking at over sales of 2011-2012, the data itself again is manufactured, uh, just created out of random data. It's about 64,000 lines long and shows about 12, 14 fields. I end up creating four pivot tables from it. I've got the summary of 2011-2012 sales for the categories. I have another table broken out by sales rep. For American friends, I have it broken down by location, but instead of state, I'm using province. And I have it broken down over month. All again, comparison 2011-2012. Now this is the benefit of slicers. With Slicer, you have interactivity, not just with the graph, but with other slices as well. Each one of these slicers is coordinated with not one graph, but all four graphs. And for an example, uh, if clicking on rep, sales rep, you notice I've got the four pivot tables selected, so that it's interactive. So if I click on, for example, Tim, and just select Tim, we see how each of the graphs automatically changes. So we see Tim doesn't sell much in the way the breads, doesn't sell some fruit and a lot of vegetables. We have our 2011 versus 2012, which indicates that Tim isn't selling a lot in 2012. We also notice that Tim is selling a lot more in Ontario where, versus the Eastern uh, seaboard, which is Newfoundland and Nova Scotia. And we can see his historical breakdown. But clicking on a slicer of Tim, everything else is automatically filtered out. So for example, we see the provinces grayed out, which are not affected. And in these customer names, just the customers that are applicable are still highlighted. Customer names are just random generations. If I want to break it down even further and say, let's take a look at strictly fruit, the grass again change and break down that just that specific sales information. I want to take a look at just 2012, break it down even further, and let's say I want to take a look at the fourth quarter. And again, when I do the fourth quarter, we see the months automatically gray down. And if I want to reset everything, I just click the reset filter button, and everything goes back to the way it was. Even though this is still Excel, you can still take a look at it. We've removed the grid lines, put a little color to it, and you can do the same thing with the slicers. With a slicer, click on slicer options, and you can pick and choose a color format just to pretty it up. So you have an interactive graphical interface for your dashboard. It has some color, and it's a file that you can share with other people. Rather than using Excel with Power Pivot, which is another option, we have a little bit more functionality with the Power Pivot. The problem with Power Pivot for Excel is that you have to ensure that each user has Power Pivot installed. Uh, this is on the presumption that you aren't using a SharePoint server. So with this just a straight pivot table, this file itself is about six megabytes long. You can protect the data sheet so that no user can add to it or change anything. But an user can go in and create their own pivot table or pivot chart, and then add on their own slicer or spark line and see what they want to see. So for example, if I want to add on another slicer and I'm going to add on skew, I have that option, and I can resize it. And right now it's at one column. 
and I'm going to choose to have multiple columns just to keep it nice and simple. And with a slicer, like I said, you can resize it and put it in where you want and customize in that feature. There are advanced options with slicers. You can create macros and have the slicers affect other cells and vice versa. But just for a simple dashboard for common users, what you're grabbing here is an interactive application in Excel that everybody knows and can work with, a file that everybody can see and view, and still keep that interaction going and keep it maintained. So I hope you see the benefit of setting up an Excel dashboard and the power of slicers. And I thank you for your time.